Well, welcome. I think we're nearly, nearly everybody here out today. So. Welcome to those who are joining online. If there is anyone joining online, it's good to see people together. Uh, uh, encouraging. Uh, today. Oh, yeah. Still there. The connection is still there. Uh, today, uh, just a little reminder that uh, uh, you can find us uh, on the streets of Chester this afternoon on uh, uh, Facebook tonight at 8 o'clock and on Wednesday at 7.30. Uh, God willing, uh, prayer on a Thursday night, uh, uh, and also um, uh, we want to announce the ladies' time. There's going to be. Do you want to say something about that? Or give a hand over to my wife. I'm not a lady, so. So there are these little leaflets at the back for us ladies. If you would like to give it to somebody, if the idea is like invite people, it's about spiritual mothering, but the idea is it doesn't just apply to mothers. I'm not a mother, and it's actually for us investing in other ladies, other people in our lives. So it's applicable to anyone, any lady of any age. <laughs> Come, it's going to be amazing because we're going to listen to a ladies' time from Baltimore, and it's a really special Sundrine who used to be the pastor's wife here is going to share and it's going to be really really special so really pray um we've been praying in the school so if anyone's free around you know quarter to nine nine o'clock come one of us is free and we can pray together uh, but we i'm really expecting god to move you know so like and there's posters if anyone knows somewhere we can put a poster i'll put some on the green um on my little stand so like you know Invite ladies, you know, it's going to be a special time and I'm praying that God will draw people, you know, so come ladies, 31st of May, 2 o'clock, it's a Tuesday, I know that's a little bit unusual but I know I had ladies who didn't, who didn't work Saturday, so Tuesday, come, come, there you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is the first time you've found us online, you can also find us at ggechurch.co.uk on YouTube as well uh, at uh, Greater Grace Evangelical Church and on Instagram. Um, let's do this. Let's um, let's read God's Word today. We need God's Word. Uh, you'll read from Philippians four. And verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words today, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Your faithfulness to keep your word. Your word is settled forever in heaven. It doesn't change. Thank you, Lord, that there is something constant in our life, in a world of changes, in a world of... Uh, flexibility Lord we, we thank you that you are the stable 
foundation of our lives. So thank you for your word that it doesn't change. Thank you, Lord, that your word is also always fresh to us, Lord. It sounds like a paradox, but actually, Lord, we thank you that we can find newness of life in you, Lord. Strengthen us today, Lord. Quicken us, Lord, we ask. Touch those that need the, the, the deepest touch today. Lord, only you know what we need this morning. We don't know it ourselves. <laughs> but, Lord, you know you have perfect wisdom into our situation. Lord, we ask that each one would receive what they need this morning from you, Lord. Whether it's from the message, whether it's from the fellowship afterwards, whether it's uh, just in conversations, just in our time together now, Lord, thank you. You are our healer today, Lord. We look to you and thank you. You are our saviour. You are our reward today. And we thank you for that. We worship you now, Lord. We just want to lift up the name of our saviour and worship Jesus Christ in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen Wow Well just thinking about these verses today where are we? where are we at today? What's our focus? Where, where, where is our mind? You know, this world comes at us with details, <laughs> with uh, all sorts of ideas, uh, things that will uh, steal our joy, take our attention, uh, whatever it is. Uh, but you know what? We have an awesome Saviour. That is our focus this morning. The Lord Jesus Christ. We have great salvation. We have prayer. We have body life. We have a great Saviour. You know, it's interesting we study this last night and uh, was thinking actually that there is a tendency within our society to focus on negativity. You notice that from the news, from the culture, from uh, the culture of our nation. Even when something good happens, people <laughs> a lot of the time people can't enjoy it. Why? Because there's this there's this history of negativity really within our within ourselves, within our own human heart, within <laughs> within our makeup, within the within the way things are. That actually we can be drawn to to the, to the negative side of things. There's also uh, a cultural norm today that, oh, you talk about problems. The more you talk about problems, the more they'll get dealt with and resolved. Oh, you're not facing up to the issue. You need to talk it out, you know. You know what? No. That's not necessarily true. That's the wisdom of the world. That's the wisdom of psychology. Dig down deep and find a deep-seated problem somewhere. Find somebody else to blame. But ultimately, you know, that is the heart of man. To blame somebody else. Started in Eden, didn't it? I wasn't planning to speak about this, but, you know, it's like, well, back, way back in Eden, wasn't it? You know, like, all the say. Uh, you know the wife, the the wife you gave me, actually the woman, she gave it to me, and then and then the woman said, oh, the serpent, he 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 beguiled me, he he tricked me, and it's like pass the buck. You know, 
we'll find the root of the problem the problem is here but you know what the more people talk about negativity the more people focus on the problems the bigger the problems get because we put any attention on them <laughs> you know really and truly we, we can do that the more we think on something the bigger the problem gets and you know what it's against God's heart we have a God who came down to earth we have a saviour who went to the cross to bear the pain the guilt, the sorrows, the griefs. Wow, do we believe it? You know, it's like, it's a challenge for us sometimes to believe this. Oh, there are a lot of things that come against us. There are a lot of uh, issues. There are a lot of things that we will face in this life. But our Saviour came to bear, bear our griefs and our sorrows. He came, love covers a multitude of sins. You know, sometimes we meet people and they they focus on the wrong that somebody did them. The wrong that somebody did them two years ago, five years ago, 30 years ago. We met people like that. You know, it, it can happen. could happen to us if we're not careful, you know, that we focus on, you know, this happened, this, this thing happened. But love covers a multitude of sins. The Lord Jesus Christ came to pay for these things. To pay for our sins, the things that we've done wrong. But also to pay for the wounds. The things that people have done to us. Pay for the things that are where, you know, well this happened. This happened. And there's no getting away from it. But God knows. God knows what we go through. He knows our suffering. He, he sees us when we're alone. And the Lord Jesus Christ has great compassion on us. And he just says, you know, come my child. Let me let me spend time with you. Let me let me lift your head. Let me encourage you. Let me love you. Yes, I know there's things going on. I know there's things in your life. I know there are, there are these issues. But I came that you would have peace. And I came that you would have life. And I came that all of these things, all of these woes and ills and, 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 and problems, that they could be dealt with, not by counsellors, not by... Uh, committees, not by discussion, not by you know thrashing it out, not by parliament, but just by allowing God to take control of it, giving it over to Him. You know, uh, I was thinking about this. Our purpose on the earth, we're here to point people to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we're on the earth. To point people to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not here to solve everyone's problems. We can't solve everyone's problems. We're not here to wag fingers at people. <laughs> we're not here to put things right. We're here to point people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And say, hey, I have found a saviour. I have found a saviour and that is the important thing or whatever else happens I found a saviour <laughs> John 3 we were in John chapter 3 last week actually mm -hmm. I think last Sunday and we were in John chapter 3 funnily enough at the end of the meeting at the end of the message on on, on Wednesday the, the, the bit that nobody heard because the internet failed 
uh, and it got cut off. But there were, there were there were three of us in the room, <laughs> and so the people who were in the room, I thought, well, okay, we'll finish that. Uh, my wife encouraged me that. Well, I just finished it off for us. Okay, yeah, good. We'll preach it. We'll preach the rest. <laughs> so there is an advantage to turning up. You know, it was, uh, well, yeah, there was somebody. It wasn't just the cat, don't worry. But <laughs> there, was, there was somebody else with us. Uh, Jackie was there, but it was good. Uh, you know, and uh, we just uh, finished off in John chapter 3. John chapter 3, again today. This time, verse 14, it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Wow. Moses lifted up the serpent. Wow. And in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up. Jesus is talking about the crucifixion. He's talking about going to the cross. He's talking about what he's going to go through and suffer. But that is the answer to man's need. That is the answer to the problems which we face. It's the cross of Calvary. The Son of Man lifted up. But that is the answer for our, our life and our society is to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. When things get much, too much for us, when things get on top of us, when the way seems difficult, we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. When people attack us or criticize us, we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. When people lose focus, we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our answer. Years ago, I was talking about this with Nigel on the phone the other day. Um, <laughs> there was, uh, I remember there was somebody in the, in the, in the church. Two people. Neither I can talk about it now because neither of them are here. <laughs> uh, but um, somebody had done something, and somebody else who was in the church at the at, at the time said to me, Pastor, I think you need to write that person a letter. I said, oh, okay, fine. What's it about? Well, because of this thing, this situation, uh, it's not right, and I don't think it's right. And I think you need to realize the pastor of the church, you need to write them a letter. Tell them it's wrong. Put them right. Set it all out with scripture. It's like, wow. Okay. And you know, when people come to us like that, we, we consider what the people are saying. You know, we will listen to them because, you know, it's like, well, is this right? So I prayed about it. I thought, you know, should I deal with this situation or not? And then after a while, I thought, no, no. That's not the way. My calling is to love that person. And to point them to the Lord Jesus Christ, to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ in their situation. Do I need to point out someone's sin? <laughs> you know, is that, is, that, is that my calling in life to go around saying, oh, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you know, you're a sinner as well. I mean, yeah, the world needs to know that actually everyone has sinned. You know, we, we do share that as part of the gospel for all of sin. But there's no need to go around and point out people's failings, is there? <laughs> because actually, I'd say nine times out of ten, people know that they've done those things. People know that they they're, they're, they're have a weakness in that area. We, we, there's no point that we don't need it. We never need to be spiritual policemen going around pointing out people's failings and sins. But what we do need to do is lift up God's word. Lift up Jesus Christ. Point people to Christ and say, hey, you know, just come along. What's the ladies' song going to be about? Invite people. Why, you know, oh, they, you've got to come to church and get right. No, come and find Christ. Because we come and find Christ and Christ puts things right in our life. 
The Spirit of God touches lives. Wow. We lift people up. We lift it up the, the Lord Jesus Christ to people. Encourage people to read the Word. Yes, great. You know, the Holy Spirit is the only one that convicts, can convict us in any way. So, you know, I, if I write somebody a letter, you know, what's that going to achieve? Unless the Spirit of God has revealed that to the person. God will deal with people in their own time. Maybe they're not ready. Maybe God is dealing with something else in that person's life. First. Before they're ready. You know, like when someone goes into a hospital. You know, they, they, sometimes it's a case, oh, you need to have an operation. Okay, that's right. And then sometimes it's a case of, oh, but before you have the operation, maybe you need to, I don't know, lose weight, or maybe we need to work on your fitness or your, your you know, your, your breath, you know, your breathing before, you know, so that, you, so that, you, so that, your, your, so that your body is going to be strong enough to survive the major surgery. And you know what? The Lord is the same. The Spirit of God is the same. You know, he's like, oh, you know, well, that person hasn't got right. Oh, that person, ooh. You know what? Maybe God is dealing with aspects of a life so that one day when the big thing comes, the person is ready. You know, the, the, Lord, the Lord is very gentle with us. He's very patient with us. And it's like, uh, what is our role? To lift up the Lord Jesus Christ to people. Yes, encourage people to read the word, because when they read the word, maybe the Spirit of God can convict them through reading the word. Maybe some people don't even know that certain things are a sin until they read God's word. Have we ever done that? You read God's word and we sort of thought, oh, I didn't even know I'd done that. I didn't even know that was a sin. I didn't even know that God had a problem with that. You know, oh, it's in the Old Testament. And, you know, we have to also learn to give ourselves grace at times. But also, you know, we need to, to, to bring things to God. If the Spirit of God reveals something, then, yeah, fine. We give it over to Him to deal with. We can't deal with it ourselves. We can't, we can't heal it ourselves. We can't mend ourselves. But the master surgeon, he can heal us. The master clockmaker, he can repair us. He may, you know, he he has the user's manual. He made us. He knows how we work. Wow. We point people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I need to go to that person. Um, Oh, doesn't it say that if you have a problem with somebody, you go to them alone and tell them about it? Okay, fine. But actually, what is that saying? Is that go to them alone and condemn them? Go to them alone and say, oh, I need to have it out with you because this is happening. No, no, you know, go to them alone so that God deals with your heart. That's the point. The only heart that you have control over is your own. You know? Go to someone alone so that actually you have the grace. And, you know, if we go in meekness and gentleness in case we get in, fall into the same sin. Galatians 6, one. Guarding our own hearts. Some people have this idea of, well, well, well the Holy Spirit says, says, go, says go to someone alone so I can go around and condemn someone. No, that's not the point of it at all. It's the, completely the opposite. It's about restoration, it's about healing, it's about life. Now, only the Spirit of God can touch a person's heart. Only the Spirit of God can convict someone of sin. And when we confess it, it's forgiven, forgotten. And brought up when I feel it needs to be brought up. No. <laughs> Forgiven, forgotten, and gone forever. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> you know, because that's the thing, isn't it? We have a human heart, we have an altered nature. And that is the danger, isn't it? Forgiven, forgotten, and I, yeah, but I will bring it up one part. When, 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 when it comes to it, I'm going to bring that thing up again. No, it, it's gone forever. Cast into the deepest sea. Praise the Lord. We need it. How much do we need it? Yeah. No, it's forgiven, forgotten, gone forever. This world says, focus on your fear. Focus on your loss. Focus on your depression. Focus on what needs to be done. Focus on your sin. Focus on your failure. Focus on your wounds. You know, actually, focus on your failures. And actually, the Word of God says, no. Rejoice. Well, we've got a list of things to do there, you know, if you want something to do. Rejoice. Be moderate. Have faith. Pray. Give thanks. And have peace. That's the gist of the passage that we read. Summarised. Quickly. You know, there's this... Uh, idea that actually can can creep into our Christian lives if we're not careful. But oh isn't it terrible? Oh isn't it awful? Oh is it what the world's doing? Oh did you read it? Oh isn't it all oh, you know oh, we're living in the last days, you know. Rejoice is the what the word of God says. Rejoice. We've been given the fullness of joy. We've been given God's presence. You know. What we need is to be for our Christians to get more radical, more, more fundamental, more. Uh, no, let your moderation be known to us. What you, what you let your moderation be known. You know, we're not here to be extremists. <laughs> well, let your moderation be known unto all men. Well, the Lord is at hand. Oh, what about this? What's going to happen with that? Let you, you know, be, be careful for nothing. It says, be, be anxious. It's a better translation than that. Though. Not telling you not to be careful. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be a bit careless, careless and reckless. No, that's not what it's saying. It's saying, don't be anxious over everything. Uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving wow pray about it give it to the Lord the burdens, the troubles, the wounds the whatever they are, give them to the Lord and give thanks because actually when we give thanks it's like well suddenly the, bit, the problems are, 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 they're relative Yes, there's this problem. Yes, there's this happen. Yes, there's this to deal with. There's this issue. Uh, yeah, but actually, there is also things to give thanks for. There is something to praise God for. There is something to look at, and we can lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? Let's uh, let's say we were in a situation where everything in our life failed, but the Lord Jesus Christ is still going to be there. Calvary is still there. You know, if we, if we lose everything else in this life, we will not lose Calvary. That's never going to be undone. The finished work of Jesus Christ, that's never going to be taken away from us. The, the tomb is never going to be filled. There's never going to be a news article saying, oh, we found the body of Jesus. Still in the tomb. No, it's gone. The tomb is empty. It's there. It's still there today. Whether it's in the places that I think it is, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not even going to say another. There are there are at least two places that they claim is the is the, the size of the tomb. But, but you know. But actually, we need to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ.
you know, we could we could very easily bring up something that Christ has already died for, something he's already paid for. But that's not our heart. Whatsoever things are what? Lovely? Yeah. True, honest, yes, good, fine. Good report. Yes. Pure. Just you know, it's like yes. That's the things we focus on. Well bring up the past. Bring up our past. It's dead bends bones. It's gone. Bring up somebody else's past. Again, it's gone. As the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness. Yeah. Thinking about that, why a serpent? Remember Lisa Mulligan saying that, that she met, had some fellowship with Chinese believers, Chinese Christians at one point. And they were saying, you know, like, well, why is it that Jesus is pictured as a serpent? That's cool. <laughs> as the serpent was lifted up in the, in the wilderness, so almost the Son of Man be lifted up, and you're thinking, yeah, it's a peculiar image, isn't it? Why does why does God do that? Why does He say, you know, like, why does He lift up a serpent? You know, it's like, well, well, okay. In the original story, yes, it was the serpent that bit them, and they were re raising that up for Healy. But it's like, well, why, you know? But then I was thinking about that. What do we think of if we think of a serpent? Spiritually. What do we think of if we think of a serpent? Deceiver. Yeah. The word in the Hebrew is whisperer, I think, wasn't it? But yeah, um, the serpent, you know. We think of the devil, don't we? We think of temptation, we think of the Garden of Eden. It's in there because it's from the beginning of the Bible. And we go back to it, and it's a famous story, you know, like uh, most people somewhere on the planet, if you say Adam and Eve to them, you know, they know what's going on. They know the vagueness of the story. They might not know all the details, but it's like it's intrinsic there. The serpent. Are we lifting up the devil? No. But you know what? The Son of Man is lifting up, up, but we see our sin. We see our temptation on the cross. That's the point, isn't it? The Son of Man is lifted up as the serpent was lifted up. Sin is dealt with. The serpent is dealt with. I see my own personal sin, my own temptations, the things that actually will bother me. The things that might bother me later today. The things that bothered me yesterday. The failings, the temptations, the weaknesses. They're on the cross. The Son of Man is lifted up as the serpent was lifted up. Wow. Wow. My temptations, my failings. Not somebody else's, mine. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Mine. They're on the cross. That's it. They're dealt with. Wow. I was talking to somebody the other day and it's like, we have this idea that, oh well, yes, that's fine. And we see this in the world a lot. You know, I would never do that. You know. Well, you know, it's like, I know I've done a lot of things, but I would never do that. No, actually, you know what? Sin is equal, isn't it? <laughs> All sin is equal, you know, in, in the sight of God. And anybody says, well, I would never do that, you know, we, we can always say to them, well, there's plenty of things you, would, you have done. <laughs> there's plenty of things you would do. <laughs> you know, that's the point. And you know what? The blessing is Christ forgave them all. Christ paid for them no matter what the sin is, no matter what it, is, what, it, what, what it has been, no matter what it may be tomorrow, 
Christ has paid for it. And our life is to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. To lift up the, the, the cross of Calvary, the one who paid for it. To lift up the risen Jesus. The one who gives us life. And to focus on the things that are. Pure and just, honest, true. Who are these things? This is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the truth. He is our honesty. He is open. He is justice. He is purity. He is beauty. This is it. We lift up Jesus. We focus on him. We focus on his life. And we trust him for tomorrow. We trust him for the way forward. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word that strengthens us. Your word that encourages us. Your, your spirit that convicts us of sin. No one else can. Nothing else can. Not programs, not lectures no it's your spirit only by your spirit can we be convicted that something is wrong that something is, is, is amiss and only you can put it right Lord thank you Lord that the Lord Jesus Christ came for our sin we see our sin upon the cross we see our sins on you Lord And thank you, Lord, that actually our sin is not part of us anymore. We don't want to bring it up again. It's gone. It's healed. It's gone forever. Thank you, Lord. We, we trust you. We love you today. And we want to focus on the risen Christ. We want to focus on the Jesus who is lifted up. We want to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ in our own life, we want to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ to others. We want to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ in our situation. We want to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ when, when things cause us to struggle. Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are the answer. You are the answer to it all. Thank you, Lord, that you are our healing. Thank you, Lord, that you are our strength today. Amen. Guide us, Lord, we pray. Fill us with your life and your spirit as we go out of here today. And Lord, we pray, if there's anyone watching who has never received you as their saviour, who doesn't know what it's like, if there's someone desperate for peace today as well, someone who needs thanksgiving, someone who needs uh, prayer Lord we ask that you would just minister your life to people that people would say Lord I need you I can't make it alone yes Lord I have wounds I have issues I have failings but Lord I believe that you died for them all I believe it was for me for the wrongs that I've done and for the wrongs done to me and Lord, I just trust you as my Saviour now. And I want your victory to apply to my life. Mm -hmm. And I want the payment that you made to be on my behalf. Thank you, Lord. Come into my heart, Lord. Fill me with your Spirit, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh. we're going to sign off online now um, so I think we will maybe sing uh, last song possibly a cappella <laughs>